Hey everybody, looks like we're live here. Hope you're doing well. If we can see Tammy and everybody, if you guys are live there with us and you're seeing the screen, let us know. Just wanna make sure everybody can hear us. Sounds good, awesome. Looks like we are having a little bit of an issue with Periscope, but we're just gonna keep going uh, with Facebook and YouTube and in the community. So welcome everybody, my name is Mark Booth, I'm from the Canvas team. Um, you know, the big thing we want you guys to know is that we're here for you. We know many of you are dealing with some pretty difficult things right now. Um, and, and I'm pleased to welcome here with me, Chris Giles, who is the mastermind uh, behind this whole idea. Over the weekend, a group of the Canvas advocates and educators from around the, around the world came together. We jumped on some calls and we decided that we should put together some, some live streams to help people get up to speed about how to use Canvas in this in this remote learning or distance learning opportunity that we all have now. So special thanks to Chris. We've got a lot of people around the community who are um, ready to answer questions as well. This is gonna be something that we do multiple times this week. If there's specific topics you want us to cover, make sure you drop it there in the chat and we're ready to go. So I wanna introduce here Chris Giles, who's one of our Canvas advocates and educators from up in Oregon. And today Chris is gonna walk us through some of the basics of making sure you're up and running on Canvas. Chris, take it away. Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, Mark and I are not in the same space, so I'm just, uh, I only need one person out there to say, hey, I can hear you, um, because I'm using a different mic and I just wanna make sure you're all able to hear, uh, taking notes for educators. Okay, cool. So I'm hoping that people can go ahead and hear me. So we're gonna get started. Uh, we have about 30 minutes. We're probably gonna, um, we might have some time for questions and answers at the end. Um, but feel free to go ahead and, and type in all of your questions during our space and time this morning. We have some fantastic people who are gonna help us this morning. So with that being said, we're gonna get started. So again, I just wanna welcome you to our Canvas Live. This is our first time doing it as far as a group. We came together, like Mark said, and we decided that uh, we all have enough knowledge and information experience. Let's go ahead and, and share that with the community. All right. Uh, and if you're not uh, familiar with the, the network, you guys hopefully should be able to see a chat box. I'm wearing earbuds just because it's easier for me to hear. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start with Canvas Basics. And I want you to know that this is just like a tasty snack. We're not going to fill your plate with tons of knowledge. Matter of fact, my goal, what you see right below you, is just to provide helpful strategies to help Canvas users leverage Canvas to meet the needs of their learners. And if you see any spelling mistakes or any uh, grammar errors, please just be graceful with me. Um, I've done webinars before. I've actually done quite a bit uh, with the Department of Education. Um, so, but I've, it's been a while. So, obviously, this meme does not need any uh, introduction. You've probably seen this around. And, and I want you to think about that because, in light of what we're working on right now, um, it is not an easy space to take what we teach to face to face as teachers and push it online. And I don't want anybody to think, Oh, you could do that. That's easy to do. Uh, me, I personally have taught online at Grand Canyon University for five years, and I've also taught in the classroom. So I have the experience to know that me personally, it would take me some time to move my content to an online space where my students have access and are able to actually engage. So please take a deep breath. Give yourself some grace. Um, we're going to do our best. That's what we're going to do. So uh, real quickly, again, my name is Chris. I'm a campus administrator in our school district up here in Oregon. I've been a classroom teacher for 17 years, uh, lived uh, in Arizona, and also taught and lived in Brazil. <clears throat> and so now I'm currently in Oregon. Um, you want to take a moment and read that slide to yourself, because this quite honestly really is the summing up of what my goal is for you today. And I'm sure you've all probably been there where you've said to yourself, what, didn't I just answer that question like for 17 times? So I feel like today at the end of today, uh, I think you're going to be able to help lead you that. Unless you really want to, you know, charge money for a students responding to you. Uh, well, hey, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. All right. Um, apologize. It's going to stay black. So let's okay. That's right. I'm just going to go back to this note. Uh, you can see my notes. Basically, here's our webinar today. Uh, again, we're going to try to keep it to 30 minutes. I, I'm not going to slide death you to death. My goal is actually get you engaged in, in Canvas 
in a few minutes. So a couple things, a brief overview of the Canvas navigation. If you are a brand new user to Canvas, that is my goal. My goal is to help the teachers who have never started using, never used Canvas for whatever reason, um, whatever your reason is, but my goal is for you in the next few minutes is, is to walk away feeling like, you know what, I'm ready to go. I can start using this tool in my classroom, either face-to-face -face or online tomorrow. And that is truly my goal for you today. So a quick brief overview of the Canvas navigation. Uh, I'm gonna to explain to you my Canvas in three steps uh, and we'll have time for questions. And the whole thing with the Canvas in three steps is uh, after three or four years of training our staff here in our district, my I've really come to, to a really good sense of understanding that I could show you everything in Canvas, but that's not going to get you started today. Uh, so I've really kind of boiled it down to three things that I'd like for you to do. If you have a laptop at your home and you're sitting in front of your Canvas instance, log in. If you're a brand new teacher, you're like, I've never used it, but I can log in, log in for us because I'd love for you to actually get a chance to start and try a few of these uh, things that we're going to go ahead and suggest to you. And the next question, because again, I don't know if my slides are working, so I apologize for not being in slide motion. Um, but basically, the question is why. Well, my goal today is not to teach, not to, not to change how you use Canvas. I'm not trying to change the way you use Canvas in your classroom. Uh, I really just want to give those teachers, those beginner teachers, a tool that they can get started. So if you're like Chris, that really doesn't fit for me. Again, I'm here to support you on how you want to use Canvas. But if you're like, I've never used it, uh, I want to get started using it. That is the audience today that I'm really working towards uh, supporting today. So that's kind of the why you're going to see me implement and talk about some of the things that we're going to work on today. So I'm going to actually get started by actually going to my Canvas course. Uh, please don't get afraid because, because of my position, I have way more courses than the average person. So that's what you're seeing right now. Um, but real quickly, as far as the Canvas and how Canvas is being used, we're just going to take a moment um, to talk about a couple navigational components. And I'm sure that you can see your screen right now. But on the left hand side, if you're a Canvas user, you're basically, if you mouse over anything, you're going to see the, the buttons. Obviously, if I mouse over this, it's going to be the dashboard. And this is what you see as a student, a teacher, or as a, or as a parent. When I click on the dashboard, this will load all of my courses. And, then why, and the reason why that's so important is if you have three or four classes, or if you have 10 classes, the simplest route is to simply say, I'm going to click on my dashboard, and it'll bring up my classes. Um, and I want you to know the power of Canvas is not only as a teacher do I see the dashboard, but as a student, I see the dashboard. And as a parent, I have a dashboard. And here in our school district, we have Canvas access for every single parent in our entire district. Uh, and we have roughly 25,000 students using Canvas every week. Um, so if a parent has a, an active parent view or a Synergy parent view account, we have created a Canvas account account form. So my goal is to say, hey, listen, this is the same for all users, parents, Canvas, uh, I'm sorry, teachers or students. Um, below that, you're gonna see where it says courses. And again, don't be afraid of what I have, but basically if you wanna get to your courses, the fastest way to get your courses, click on courses and go to all courses. And then that will quickly get you to the courses that you are either teaching or you are taking. And when you're on this screen, you're gonna see a little star. And basically the star simply means that that course is located quickly when I click on my dashboard. So again, this is just a brief overview. If you've never used Canvas uh, and you've never sat down or somebody's never, you've never had a chance to sit into a training or even ask the questions, I just want to show you the three buttons we're talking about, the dashboard, our courses, and finally the most important one is the calendar. And when you click on the calendar, it actually brings up for you a calendar. And this is actually kind of the crux of today's whole entire platform. Our webinar today is to really leverage this tool in your classroom. Um, so well, let's get started. Uh, so we'll go back to the why. So if you were in front of your laptop, if you're uh, on a computer, uh, maybe somebody can give me a shout out. Canvas uh, is different than mine. Ah, yeah, it's true. That's a good point. Um, and thank you for, for saying that. There is a possibility that you might look at your Canvas and it might be a little bit different than mine, and I want you to know that's okay. Um, we have an IT department that helps set it up. But the first thing I want to do is just kind of start up by this screen. This is kind of the screen that actually invokes a lot of, um, I shouldn't say a lot. This is a screen that could potentially invoke some fear or some concern for teachers when it comes to Canvas, because the first thing they might see is this. In our school district, we populate or create courses in Canvas based on 
Synergy, which is our student information system. Some schools use PowerSchool, some schools use um, Skyward, and the universities might use a different process altogether. But typically, if you're a teacher, especially in our school district, we have created the course for you. So you don't have to build the course and you don't have to add the students to the course. We take care of that for you. But typically, the one thing that we don't necessarily take care of for you is building content. In your school district, you might be fortunate enough to have somebody build the content for you. Um, but in our case, in many of the, the schools I work with, the, uh, the districts I work with, they don't have things or people who are building content for them. So in this case, this is kind of an intimidating screen for most teachers. And so when I work with teachers and I tell them my Canvas in three steps, this is simply Canvas in three steps. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. And Canvas in three steps is simply, and I have a link, that link down below that you see is to my Google document that has this information. But it's three steps. We're going to publish our course. We're going to go ahead and edit and, and add some information just so our students and parents um, can see that information. And then finally, we're going to use the calendar. And so again, a, a brief overview is what I did for Canvas. Uh, we will have more specific webinars this week, like how do I create assignments? How do I create modules? All of those things we're going to be working on creating more mini webinars. But today, again, is this brief overview. So I want you to want you to feel like a take a deep breath. Because if you've never used Canvas, um, you can get started in three steps. And I'm pretty confident that that's going to work for everybody today. So with that being said, if, if you've been given a course and you have a course shell which is empty, quite honestly, the first step is just hit publish. And then when it comes up to us, this is what would you like to publish? How would you like to go ahead and do it? And my suggestion, my advice to all teachers Canvas in three steps is simply choose the syllabus as your homepage and hit publish. And the reason why I suggest publishing and choosing your syllabus as your homepage is because you saw how many clicks that took. That took two clicks. I literally went publish and choose syllabus. So that's actually step one. We're actually one third of the way through this webinar. As crazy as that sounds. Uh, step two, again, if I go back to my screen, um, step two is to edit the syllabus and add pictures or contact information. Today, I'm not going to spend a ton of time editing and adding pictures, but I am going to go ahead and click on the edit button. And this is where I can go ahead and write down my welcome to class message. And I'm a big fan of trying to learn how to become more um, aware of ADA compliance. So I'm going to use the titles. And I might even go ahead and just do a quick, like, hey, I like a color. Uh, welcome to class. And then I'm just going to add my information. So, Mr. Tiles. Um, nine. And I might put down contact information. Oh, look at my bad, my, my spelling. <laughs> and then I might put down my office number. And I might even put down my office hours. And the reason why I do this information is simply because if there's one place that all parents and teachers will come to, it's they're going to come to my homepage. And, and again, I'm not going to go spend the time printing out my picture, but you certainly can by, again, clicking on edit. And I can go ahead and I can add images if I want to. I have lots of like lots of pictures if I want to. But for now, the simplicity of it is just I just want my I just want a space so that if parents or teachers drop in on my course and they and they find out and they want to ask a question, they want to know who I am. This is where I might have a picture of myself. This is where I'm going to go ahead and add information about my contact information or my office hours. But the power to this is again, you saw me, it was two clicks to get to the syllabus is my homepage, and then I literally clicked on edit. And begin to add my information and again edit uh, and you can go ahead and add images which in this case i don't have any right now um, but if i want to add images or pictures and i'm a big fan of trying to use colors and use the headers uh, that's it so we're actually to be quite honest as shocking as it sounds we're actually two-thirds of the way through through a webinar i mean literally step one publish it make the syllabus your own page Step two, go ahead and click edit and pretty up your page, which by the way, you don't see a very pretty page on my course, uh, intentionally of course. Uh, and now we're on to step three. And step three is quite honestly kind of the most important step because it is a mind shift on how you deliver and how you go ahead and interact with your students as far as the content 
is concerned. Uh, and again, I'm not here to change how you engage with Canvas, but in light of what, what's happening today with, with parents, sorry, with, with remote learning or having to go teach online, or in light of having to prepare for some type of blended learning, Canvas is really quite honestly, I feel like the answer in our school district for sure, at least in 612, is we can, if we need to, we can get that content out there. And the calendar is the simplest approach to getting information to our users. And I want you to think about it as to why. And here, I'm going to go ahead and put a picture up for the calendar right here. Um, the reason why, in my opinion, we'll see if this is going to load or not. It's not going to load, so I'm not going to worry about it. The reason why I feel like the calendar is the most powerful tool to begin with as a new user is because simply, if you think about it as an adult, when you look at your day and you and you decide what we're working on today, and, and I live and breathe by my Outlook calendar, I don't spend the time reading each email to figure out what I'm doing today. I actually go to my, cam my Outlook calendar and I look and see what's happening today, what do I have going on, who do I have to engage in. So what I feel like for a user, a teacher, a parent, and a student, what's the one space that I can go to to find out what's due, when it's due, and how do I find it? And I believe it's the calendar. Now, you, a teacher can, I'm sorry, a student can still click into your course. They can still engage in your content. That doesn't change. But if I have been home or I've been sick for a couple of days or I know I'm going away, or in this case, I know that remote learning might have to take place in my school district, do I want to click into each and every Canvas course to find out what's going on, or do I simply just want to go to my calendar? And that's really, quite honestly the answer, in my opinion. The calendar is what's going to show your parents and your students what's due, when it's due, and it'll help them locate it as fast as possible. Uh, and in this case, what you're seeing right now is an example of a fifth grade teacher in our school district who's an amazing teacher uh, using it in her classroom. And so instead of having a calendar for each and every course or contents that she teaches, she has one calendar that she uses for the day and she brings up her daily agenda so that her students can click on it. Again, if students are not here today or tomorrow for whatever reason, sickness, vacation, uh, she just simply says, hey, go ahead and click on today's calendar or click on the calendar day that you missed. And I put all that content there for you. And then another example uh, we have is a science teacher here uh, who's an amazing science teacher. And he's taken his calendar to the nines as far as, OK, not only is he putting content in the calendar, what's happening in that classroom? But he's also, as you can see, he's putting in articles and PDFs. Again, there's no reason why you can't use modules. There's no reason why you can't use assignments and all of that. There's, there's nothing stopping you. But again, if I'm a student or a parent and I want to know how to help my child or what is due today or next week, the calendar is a simple approach. So let's go back to the calendar. So step one, we, we published it. Step two, uh, and we, we chose the, the syllabus and we edit the syllabus. And step three is the calendar. And as far as the calendar, what's really important is to remember this. On the left, on the right hand side, you have all of the courses that you teach. So in this case, these are the courses that I've either created, built out, or teach. And so the top one is always your default. So I'm going to scroll down and I have one called BSD Hub and BSD Test Case. Um, maybe I have a lot of courses. You can go ahead and click on the little, I call them jelly beans, but people call them something else. And I can go ahead and change the course. And the power to that is that a student can change the color to match their style. A parent can do the same thing and so can a teacher. And so in this case, I have chosen my BSD Hub my test course, these are the classes that I'm working on. And I'm gonna scroll down to do my remote learning course. Let's see here, it's down here. Oh, I'm gonna have to hit refresh because it's not there. Um, just so you can see the course that I'm publishing towards. I have a lot of Canvas courses, and so that's one of the reasons why you will probably see a lot of uh, things on my calendar or if you don't it's actually one of the reasons why the calendar takes a long time to load <laughs> as crazy as that sound so i'm going to scroll down and find my remote course i have no idea where it is there it is remote learning once i check on it that allows me to actually add information to the course so now like we said again you can still teach with content. You can still teach with modules. You can still teach with pages. There's nobody, I'm not asking that you change your processing, but if I'm going to go ahead and create a place for my students, I'm going to do this here. So today is the 16th. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the 16th. 
And when I do that, I'll come to an event or an assignment in an or group. I am doing this as an event. So if you come into my classroom today, I'm going to call it Giles um, Science Agenda. And the reason why I'm calling it Giles Science Agenda, because if a student has five classes and they just see agenda, it might be a little overwhelming. So if you call, put your name in front of it, like the teacher, Mr. Hammond, who, or science teacher over here, uh, he usually puts his name in front of the science agenda, just so his students can quickly identify which course belongs to him. Because again, your students might have five or six classes, university classes might have more. And, and I will say, quick caveat, um, I'm, I'm driving all my instructions to the calendar. When I taught online for Grand Canyon, I did not um, drive instructions for the calendar. I drove my instructions for the announcements. But the point is the same, one space. So if you're in an online university, or if you're just a university, or if you're a, a teacher who's like, oh, I'd rather use agenda, I'd rather use analysis, that's okay. But the point is you can still do the same thing. You can go ahead and still tell your students or your parents what's going on, what's due, when it's due, and how to find information. That process does not change. So I gave my title, and I would use the same title every single time um, my students would see this. And here, I want you to think real quickly. Students come into your classroom. What are the first two questions they might ask you, typically? Maybe somebody can answer that question. But when your students come into your classroom, what might be the one or two typical, always, always asked question of you? Let's see if anybody can respond. If you don't, it's okay. Um, in my experience, the question that has been typically asked of me as a teacher is, what are we doing today, Mr. Jones? Uh, and so, yeah, there we go. What are we doing today? And so the response to me is, oh, as a teacher is, I would put it on my whiteboard. If this was my big, gigantic whiteboard, my friends, here's what we're working on today. This is our agenda. Um, yeah, and when are things due? Absolutely. And that, and that works just great. But the next day I had to erase the whiteboard or I had to adjust it. Or in three days I had to fix it and add more information to my whiteboard. But now all of a sudden I had three students who are not there. So again, the calendar or if you want to use announcements, goes back and morning, so they're going to make an announcement. So you guys can hear the announcements. I'm in a school that's shut down for the day. Um, anyways, the calendar is the one place where I can go ahead and tell my students what's due, when it's due. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my science agenda. Sorry for the interference you guys are all here today. And I'm gonna go ahead and just choose my remote learning because this is the calendar where I'm making that information take place. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit more options. And when I do that, the great thing about Canvas is this window that you see is the same in as if when you went and clicked edit and you wanted to edit your syllabus or you want to make a home page or you want to make an assignment. This space is the same look and feel. So you're not relearning a new space each time you create something. Uh, welcome to class. Class. Uh, today's now I'm going to go ahead and put down our today's objectives, and I can list them. Uh, again, if I if I remember back, um, again I taught at university for five years. So I may not use the calendar, but I might use the agenda. And I may not call them objectives. I might have called them like module tasks. But it's it's like, hey, this is what we're working on today or for this week, just to give my students a heads up. Uh, and the powerful thing to this, not only can I go ahead and start listing off things today, we're going to go ahead and read an article um, and discuss um, you know, something that we have important. And I want you to go ahead and engage uh, in uh, of a task, right? And then I also, real quickly, again, I'm going back to my headers. Uh, I actually want my, want my students to go ahead and read this. And that would be where I could go ahead and post that article. So if I want to want to go find an article that I want my students to read, and I'm just pulling up an article right now. then I can actually go ahead and post that information in here for my students. And then if you're in a school district where you can actually engage with other tools, I can actually go ahead and watch this video. And I can actually go ahead and engage my students with the video. And so in this case, I have a YouTube video and I'm gonna go ahead and promote learning. And I'm just gonna go ahead and physically embed this video. And, and I'm going 
go ahead and hit create event. Um, and I'll go back over this in just a second, but basically the point of this is when my students walk into my class, and again, here's my, my personal opinion. What's good for us in this time of need and this pinch of having to go to remote learning is actually good for your class when the students come to your classroom face-to-face. -face. When my students come into my classroom face-to-face, -face, I'm gonna go ahead and give them this calendar. So the calendar looks small, like, oh, Chris, nobody can see this. This is a tiny little calendar. Absolutely, it's, it is tiny. But if I click on my title, then it comes up into a big screen. I might project this on my big screen. When you guys come in, when my students come in today, I might have my instructions. Please come in, go ahead and sit down, maybe keep your Chromebooks closed for the moment, but here's my instructions of what we're working on today. Or I might have my students open up their own laptops and I might have them actually read the agenda to their partner. Hey, go ahead and please read uh, the agenda of today's class and let's get the instructions. And then what I've done effectively is I've done a few things. One, I've told my students what we're doing today. And, and if I have anything due or if I have some tasks that I want them to engage in, I'm telling them when it's due. Uh, for the person who's asking, um, this is a good question. For the person asking for help, helping students sign up, someone just tweeted about useful and forgot. Okay, good. Um, thanks for doing that. Anyways, um, I was reading a, a question about that. Sorry about that. Um, but I'll put the bitly out again. Uh, so anyways, the whole point of this is, this is engaging my students in what we're doing today in class. Yes, I'm going to have some students who still might ask me the question, what are we doing today, Mr. Giles? But the reality is that I'm going to find myself repeating myself less. Um, in, a, in, a, in a world where, where we're not in a pandemic and my class is happening and operating normally, a student comes in and says, Mr. Giles, I'm going away for a few days. What can I do? My response to that student and the response that every teacher has becoming more used to saying is, go ahead and check Canvas. But I will say the caveat to simply saying check Canvas is this. If, if I'm a student and I need to go into each and every class to find out how to check Canvas, if, if I have five teachers giving me assignments and, or giving me tasks to do, and I have to click on each and every course, that's a lot of work for me. That's a big load for me as a, as a learner. But if I know that I can go to the calendar and I can say, oh, look at my teacher gave me an agenda for today, or I'm at home for a couple days, my teacher's put in some information for me, and I know I what's happening in class. Oh, look at my teacher's actually created a flipgrid assignment for me to engage in. And oh my gosh, I don't have to actually go to each and every course, I could actually engage in this assignment right here. So again, I'm not trying to change how you are processing or using Canvas. Um, I just feel like let's remove the barriers uh, for students and for parents, which is what, where do I have to go to find out what's happening? And remove the barriers for teachers using Canvas, which is simply three steps. Publish the course, using the syllabus your homepage, edit to make it kind of look pretty, and use the calendar. And again, all I'm doing is putting an agenda. I haven't created assignments. I haven't created discussions. I'm just simply telling my students what we're doing today. And I'm putting in a website for an article that I want them to read in. I'm putting in a video that I want, might want them to engage in. Um, and they can click and literally engage in the video in that space. Or like I said earlier, they can go ahead and click on the title and the title will bring it up. So that honestly is my canvas in three steps. And like I said, I was really going to try to do my best to keep this to 30 minutes. Uh, we're kind of like nearing the end of the 30 minutes and I kind of want to um, just respond to some questions. But as you can see on this slide, publish the course is your syllabus. Um, and if you're going to say, hey, Chris, I, I don't want the syllabus on my homepage. That's OK. But I'm going to show you one more thing, one more reason, one more powerful reason why the syllabus being your homepage is powerful. The moment you start putting content on your calendar, this is my agenda, is the moment that content shows up on your homepage, which happens to be your syllabus. Now, again, if you don't want the syllabus as your homepage, that's okay, because students can still click on syllabus and it'll still load up. So Chris, if I want, Chris, I want a different page to be my homepage. As a matter of fact, I want modules to be my homepage. Totally okay. Uh, but the point is when you create content and you add material with due dates, it starts to populate on the syllabus. So now not only have I given my students access to find the content through the calendar, but I've actually kind of reiterated, hey, there's more than one place you can still find the same content. But again, the reason why the content 
I'm sorry, the reason why the calendar is, I believe, it's the one place where a parent, if I was a parent, I could look at this and say, okay, what's due for my son or daughter today? How could I find out what's happening in class? And the calendar could sometimes be overwhelming. Students can go ahead and uncheck any course that they don't want to see. And not only that, they can go ahead and click on agenda. And now I can actually see what's due this week versus everything. So the students have the ability to go ahead and, 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 and kind of interact with this in different ways. And the powerful thing to this is if I'm a student and I chose agenda, my parent, who also has access, has their own Canvas account. I'm not influencing them. And as a parent, if I want to go ahead and click on month, I'm not influencing my students' Canvas course. We have a separate course. I just happen to be able to see everything that my students can see. Uh, how about leveraging the class textbooks or common cartridges imports uh, resources? Or do you manually create your own course content? So what I haven't done is I apologize that I have not really actually been answering any questions, but um, I do want to answer a few questions now, if it's okay with, with the rest of you. But in our school district, we don't necessarily build and create course content for our teachers. Uh, that's just something we don't do. Um, but I will tell you that in our school district, one thing we do do, do do, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and show this for you right now. Um, we allow all teachers to, to build their own content. We provide teachers with the course shell based off of um, our student information center, our student information system. Sorry about that. Of course, and again, we use Synergy. Um, but I do want to show you real quickly, if you're okay with this. Uh, go ahead in one second. Not sure. I haven't changed my screen because I'm actually pulling up a screen for you. Um, I'm actually using two monitors. All right, here we go. Okay, can you all see that? So basically what you see in front of you is, is this year, um, I've implemented a real simple fix. Um, I've created a blueprint or a template for teachers and I pushed this template onto every single middle school or high school teacher. I, I have one specifically for high school and I have one specifically for middle school, um, but I've pushed this effectively a blueprint template onto every teacher and the teachers can still click on edit and they can still go ahead and change the content. They can add some pictures if they want to. That's not a problem. Matter of fact, they can even get rid of the three buttons that I put there if they want. I don't mind that, but for many of our teachers, quite actually, I, mean, I would say probably maybe even one third have left this page with the exception of maybe removing my my instructions. They've left this page so that when I click on assignments, it goes to the assignments. When my students click on this button, it goes to the calendar. And then this year, I put in a student orientation module uh, in every single course. So your district might do things differently, and, and that's okay. But one thing I've engaged this year was trying to create a blueprint so that I could at least remove one more barrier away from a teacher uh, in order for them to engage with using Canvas. Um, uh, and if that's something that is within your school district's ability of creating these templates uh, and then pushing them out to teachers, I think it's a great thing. Again, you do notice it's not published, so a teacher still has to hit publish as well. And again, go back to the calendar. Um, let me go back to this page. So um, I'm kind of finished and I don't want to go on and on and on, but I am okay with hanging out for a few minutes and, and answering questions. I've only ever been a student in Canvas. So, um, I'm assuming the person who wrote that might be literally you are a student or you're, you're a user. Uh, do teachers need permissions to use Canvas as their hub for remote learning or can anyone use Canvas? The answer really actually is, is, is Canvas is free for anybody to use. But in our school district, we have purchased Canvas as our LMS. And because we purchased Canvas as our LMS, then we're actually able to use our student information system to populate those students into the correct courses. And, and I wish I could show you, I don't want to show you students or teachers data, but if I became a, a teacher in a, and if I showed you a teacher's course, the students are already populated. So the advantage to using the paid version for a district is that um, the district takes some of that work from you away. You don't have to roster your students. You don't have to manage students and typically you don't have to worry about accounts. So that's a great question. 
Uh, do I have trouble or do I have that available in the common course uh, for districts who might want to use a template? Yeah, I will I will throw the template on there. That's, it's not the most beautiful template. It's real simple. Again, I try to boil it down to like simple quotes. Um, I have other friends in our big Canvas user group who have lots of fantastic templates. And matter of fact, I bet you Teresa or even um, Mark or somebody can actually throw in the templates that they just released for teachers a few days ago, which again, they're powerful and very easy to use templates. So uh, yeah, free accounts have to manually load their accounts or they have to join. And, and that's, that's exactly what it is. And so again, the advantage to us using our, our student information center and universities are done a little bit differently. So if you're online here and you're a uh, higher learning, um, more than likely, again, the universities set this up for you as well. So, um, yeah, and I'll, I, um, I, I hesitated about my email, um, but if Mark is cool that I still would put my email down, I think the reason why I say hesitation is I hate for my email to blow up and then I don't respond to you in an appropriate way versus on Twitter, um, I, I might be able to respond faster. It's very possible. But I, but I have no problem with you like uh, sending me a tweet, a tweet, a tweeter. A t I have no problem with you responding to me in Twitter and saying, hey, Chris, can I email you directly? And I'm happy to share my email with you. If you guys would send him a twit too, that would be really helpful. Twit, yeah, seriously, geez, I, I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. I, it's been a while since I've stood in front of a, an audience of amazing people. Um, Are there any any other questions? Big thanks to Chris for nailing this. Um, we can hang out for a few more minutes if people have questions. Yeah, we'll absolutely. To do a good a good ten plus of these this week. Um, this was really our first test run to make sure that the technology worked the way that we wanted it to, and it, and it did. So keep track on the community page, on Facebook, on YouTube. There'll be more of these coming out uh, tomorrow for sure, maybe later today as well. Yeah, and like I mentioned uh, at the beginning, I, I didn't go into creating assignments and discussions. And the reason why is because we are gonna have specific mini webinars on that. But again, uh, the goal is just simply, if you're a brand new teacher, um, how do I start using Canvas literally in 10 minutes after this webinar is done? And again, uh, if I can remind you one more time, it's simply publish your course if you have not done so. Um, and then you can edit your course and make it kind of look pretty if you want to. But then use that calendar and really engage your students. And, and as a teacher, um, I want to remind me and, and, and all of us as teachers, our audience is our students. But if you're in a school district where parents have access to Canvas or they have their own account or their parents are supporting their students through Canvas, um, our audience is actually our parents. So the more information we can tell our parents what's due, when it's due, and how to inform, how to engage with that, um, the less likely we're going to have to spend time answering with lots and lots of individual emails. So uh, again, I feel like it's what's good for a few is really powerful and good for the rest. So yeah, and Canvas will be videos will be available on Facebook. Thanks for telling me that. Uh, if you're a Microsoft District, Teams is now integrated in Canvas. Thank you for saying that, Susan. Uh, we are not. We are a Google School District. Um, so, and like I said, we're going to be doing webinars on how do I integrate Cam or Google into Canvas, which if you are a Google user, you will celebrate knowing that you can still use all of your Google stuff in Canvas beautifully. Uh, and we'll also show you some more other webinars this week. And then, yeah, uh, if you actually have a few, um, if you have a few suggestions on topics you would like to see, and again, we're going to try to keep these webinars, I think, kind of short, um, throw them in the chat or if you want to throw them in the community, or even if you want to send out a tweet, a tweet to myself or to Mark, uh, and you can even hashtag, um, hashtag Canvas chat. So. Awesome. Right, yeah. Well, everybody, thanks again for joining. Big thanks again to Chris. Um, if you pay attention here on Facebook, we'll post a link to the schedule that'll come out in the next few hours. Um, but yes, yeah, starting tomorrow, it'll be multiple hours of streaming. We may try and do some later this afternoon as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll talk to you soon.